okay. So, CNN architecture right, uh, we will okay, we will so let us leave this Lenet okay, we will start with you know AlexNet okay. Now, this is how an AlexNet looks like I mean I wish I had a, I had a picture where let us say I had not drawn all this, but anyway. So, first thing is right this is actually 227 okay, and on the figure it is represented a little wrongly 224, it is actually 227 by actually 227 by 3 okay, that is the input okay that is going and as you know AlexNet is, is the one that, that actually that actually came up first in 2012 caught the, caught the attention of, of, of all right of everybody that was the first deep network to actually break this barrier right. So, till then people were struggling to get these numbers okay this is that you know image recognition image net challenge right of uh, visual recognition. Uh, so, that is like that is a 1 million images with 1000 object classes and all right and there right, you see a jump from 25.8 to 16.4 that was a kind of a wake up call right for you know for this one deep networks and uh, the guy's name is Alex Chris, Chris Whiskey. So, this is called Alex it goes after the guy's name okay who actually made this architecture and what you see is that for the first thing said that you should notice is that right. So, when somebody defines an architecture for a, for a for a neural network right they will say con 1 max pool 1 let us say norm 1 com 2 and so on that means that there are all these operations which are happening that means there is an input then there is a convolutional layer you are calling it as a first convolutional layer then max pooling is probably happening the first time then this norm is something that was only specific to this network this is called a response norm ok and, and I do not think people use that anymore but anyway at that time it was there then you like like second convolution layer second max pooling and second norm then convolution 3 kind of so all this you can see here. So, for example, right this is the input right and here is a here is a convolutional layer which is that con 1 then you have a max pooling right which is here and then you have a norm which is also happening somewhere here then you have a con 2 layer then you have a max pool 2 then here immediately after max pool 2 you have this response norm and response norm and max pooling do not involve any unknowns ok. Response norm is simply like doing that you know y is equal to x minus mu by mu by sigma kind of operation, but like I said right uh, people do not use it anymore uh, and then con 3 right is here and then followed by con 4 uh, and then there is also a con 5 right and after that there is a max pool 3 then there is no norm after that then there is a fully connected FC 6, FC 7 and then FC 8 which is the output layer right and if you see the number of layers right the way they are counted is like for example okay this is 1 right and then con right ok. So, you see the numbers right they are only increasing with con people are not adding max pool and all as a layer okay. that is what I meant when I said that layers are typically where computations happen ok. Now, if you if you just want to want to see this in a kind of a little more detail right this is how it looks. So, right here is the input 227 cross you see 227 cross 3 and in the con 1 layer what you want to do is you want to have 11 cross 11 filters that is what he had ok by the way with a stride of 4 pad 0 and he wanted 96 such filters which means what he wanted 96 feature maps to come out from the input with filters of size 11 cross 11 cross 11 cross 11 cross 3 right 11 cross 11 because the input is 3 3 dimensional right it has 3 channels. So, which then means that which then means that if you do this convolution right. So, if you kind of go, kind of go back to that formula here 227 minus the filter size filter size is 11 plus 2 times 0 padding did he 0 pad no. So, it is like 0 by stride what is a stride is 4 plus 1 right this is that formula no. So, that means output feature map should be 227 minus 11 is how much 216 by 4 is 54 plus 1 55 right. So, which is what you see on the left right you see that 55 cross 55 cross 96 because you use 96 box filters ok. Now, that goes as input then you do a do a max pooling and for max max pooling 3 by 3 filters right I mean you know at stride 2. So, so what does that mean? So, you so, so you are so you are getting a feature map a volume which is like 55 cross 55 cross 96 and on this right you are doing a max pooling uh, right which is uh, what is this max pool. So, it is called it is like 3 cross 3 right. So, you take 55 and then minus 3 right which is the filter size and as I said right max pool also the same thing minus 3 plus 0 padding there is no 0 padding right. So, plus 0 by stride which is 2 plus 1. So, what is this 55 minus 3 is 52 26 plus 1. So, that is 27 right. So, yeah so here you see right 27 cross 26 and 27 cross 27 and and you see 96 right and uh, and also right remember yeah one more thing that I forgot to tell is when you are doing max pooling right you just do it uh, indiv independently each for each channel I mean you do not do like block uh, max pooling 
I mean what I am saying is you got you got to say 96 uh, channels right when you are doing max pooling you are only looking at this local guy and then and then and out fr from there you get one channel then max pooling on this you get one it is not along the depth okay. So, max pooling is like you know each independent channel that is why you get still 96 channels for each channel you have done a max pooling and you have kind of reduced uh, the, the size effectively to almost half now from 55. And the idea is that right, you may still be able to able to do whatever you want right and uh, and the other thing is you are carrying the most in important information forward right I mean that is another way to look at it I mean one is that you are able to reduce the size of your size feature representation so each is like a feature representation right I mean at every layer you are getting some feature map which is supposed to explain something about your input image and uh, the, the feature representation uh, you know can uh, can keep reducing and but then may be right you may not be able to make it too small maybe you will lose something along the way. Therefore, you have to play a night uh, you know a, a delicate balance in terms of how much you can go down to. Uh, there are kind of things called auto encoders whose job is precisely this, whose job is to actually give an input image produce it at the output okay the same image and then right and then there will be there will be a bottleneck layer in between. So, the bottleneck is like saying how much can you squeeze it right and then the idea is that you throw away this the other part right, which is the decoder part because the idea is that you have image whose representation is so neat that means it can be so compact right so that is called the bottleneck. So, there people will try to try to pull it push it down push it down push it down to the extent that you can still reconstruct reasonably but then this bottleneck becomes really a small sort of a representation which means that that representation captures all the what do you say right all the you know invariance that you want to that you want to capture from an image think of a face and if the face has various different variations but then you want to ignore all those variations and capture what is intrinsic to that face right that is what you should be capturing and that typically will lie in a very very kind of a low dimensional space but the rest of it is all noise right the, the dimension is getting the manifold is getting bigger because because right, you are using all kinds of other uh, extrinsics really if you want to look at in fact it's very interesting if you look at uh, if you were to plot all our faces right i mean right think about it i mean you know let's say i take a take a human face 64 cross 64 and if i think about think about a space that is like 64 square right in that dimension if you pick a point will it be a face i randomly pick a point in that 64 square dimensional space typically it will not be a it will you will have to try very hard to find where the where a face is Okay, if you really look at where the faces are lie on a very neat manifold you know it will be like very small subspace right out there whereas you are you are representing it using some 64 square dimension thinking that that is what you need but actually that is not what you need because if I just pick randomly I would not see a face at all it will all be noise right. So, so that is the idea behind representation right. So, when you keep saying representation that is what you mean what is that what is that space right in which in that subspace in which this whole thing is lying this this particular whatever right if you are taking talking about faces then where is it lying right. So, similarly all this feature representation feature that we keep talking about is all about getting there right and uh, sometimes it is very exp explicit sometimes it is for a task like this where you want to do a classification okay let me just go forward. So, this max pool right you understood then this norm one forget it I mean you know do not worry too much about it then again right 256 5 cross 5 filters at stride 1 and pad 2 okay until you come here. Now, one of the things right that I want you to want you to observe is that this I think you can figure out now see look at this the unknowns right that you have to find out the weights right I mean good that it is already here. If you actually compute right how many weights okay you okay you need to find out right uh, that that uh, that now you know right you know the box filter size you know how many filters you need. So, at the first layer it is about you know 35 k at the second layer it is about 307 k at the third layer 884 k that means you are this is not max pooling at all this is exactly where you have a con 1 con 2 kind of layers right that is where you will find out all the filters then 663 k then 442k that means here you are at like con 1 2 3 4 5 right so so here it is con 5 somebody can actually check this out okay you can match these numbers but but look at the next one the moment you jump from here to the fully connected layer it's like you know million it's a 37 million right and why how do you arrive at the 36 into 37 million it'll be like 6 into 6 into 256 which you are going to flatten right into 4096 right i mean we will we'll unwrap this no 6 into 6 into 256 unwrap it and then put it next to another layer it will like 4090 you multiply that with a calculator you will get a 37 million. So, you can see the parameters suddenly blow up right I mean that is the reason why an MLP is not such a great thing 
because you are unknowns right till now if you add up all this it may be a few million that is all that is 37 million then the next one is 4096 into 409 that is another 16 million then 4 into 1k right that is another 4 million right. So, you have already so an AlexNet has typically 60 million unknowns okay, that you have to find out. So, in those days it was big deal right imagine right I mean 19 what is it no, no not 19 I mean right, 2012 right 2012 you are talking about 60 million unknowns to be found out you do not have the GPS that is why you see that there are there are two tracks here by the way did you see did you notice it is not like one track right you see there is an upper arm that is running and there is a lower arm that is running this you would not see in other networks that is because right, they did not have the see, GPU power. So, so they had to have you know so you see right there are 48 feature maps here and 48 feature maps being independently estimated there because there are 96 no it is split <laughs> similarly 256 will be split like 128, 128. So, there are like two parallel arms going but do not worry about what is the upper parallel arms just that they did not have the compute power. So, they had to split the to split the task. So, all that I am saying is if you look at what the convolutional neural network really occupied that must be not not the 37 million rest of it is about 3 million the what the what the fully connected layer that came at the end occupied was like 57 million out of 60 million right it is a big thing. But then if you look at the number of neurons where the actual computation is going on that you will find that the CNN will occupy most of the computer. So, the places right I mean where does where does the computation happen it happens inside a neuron right you compute all these weights at all, but where is the actual computation going on that is actually happening inside a neuron. So, if you look at uh, look at how many neurons are getting involved in a CNN right it will be like 55 cross 56, 55 into 55 into say 96 that many neurons and similarly 27 into 27 into 256 that many neurons into of course into the into oh uh, yeah uh, no, the number of feature maps is already there right 27 into 27 into 256. So, that number if you find out right you will have these numbers right, that are that have kind of marked here I mean you can compute that I mean so it is easy to just do the multiplication. But if you look at the FC right it is very small 4000, 4000, 1000. So, if you look at the parameters the unknowns MLP is uh, the fully connected let us not call MLP fully connected layers right will kind will kind of you know take on the I mean they are the ones that will incur the highest computation highest uh, unknowns right that you have to estimate and you know well, well you know one can argue as to why do you then use a fully connected layer right can you not do but the, but the idea is that you know somewhere apparently that kind of aggregation is needed in order to be able to solve these tasks the classification tasks right towards the end right you need at least a few fully connected that is what has been again empirically observed that you need that kind of aggregation you know where you have to aggregate from everywhere. That is, uh, I do know, this locality and all is okay till a certain point. Then after that, right, you have to have this where, where you know, where you have to have every neuron look at, look at, you know, every other thing in the previous layer. Uh, all this empirical, okay. Like I said, that none of this is apparently happens in the brain, okay. Our the way we do things, the way we represent, to some extent, maybe a few of these things happen, but nobody knows how we do things, okay. So it's just that, right. So anyway, so yeah, so the number of neurons is really the other way around compare the unknowns wise it is like the uh, you know the fully connected layers have the fewest ok. And uh, yeah, I think you know so see so historical note trained on GTX 580 GPU with only 3 GB memory. So, I just wanted to cover this right. So, if you look at look at the right this was apparently the first use of ReLU ok. Some of the important takeaways of an AlexNet this is the first use of ReLU. Norm layers are, like I said not common anymore heavy data augmentation what does data augmentation mean? Yeah, in some ways exactly flipping, adding noise, uh, rotating, shearing right whatever you want to do. So, all kinds of augmentation dropout right now you understand, uh, but dropout is only for the fully connected layer I am going to leave it to you why you cannot do dropout in a CNN. Can you do dropout if is it useful ok batch so when I say dropout 0 0.5 that is for the that is for the fully connected layers ok. Batch size 128 that you know understand right mini batch 128 uh, images at a time SGD momentum you understand now 0.9 learning rate you know now reduce by 10 manually when when the validation accuracy flattens out right plateaus. Uh, then L2 weight decay this is that uh, what is L2 weight decay? Regularization of the weights yeah yeah norm of W square right that uh, lambda or beta or whatever that is multiplying that. Then this ensemble ok do not worry I mean that is like right different architectures the ensemble sort of a performance. So, that I think we can leave out. Thank you.